Okay, this video is just a follow-up to the last video I made. Jehovah's Witnesses, the overlapping generation. It was a very long video, two and a half hours, and you'll probably notice that there were three endings. So I actually did many hundreds of takes trying to decide how to end the video and the three of them uh, I thought were so relevant I would just include them all. And it took me prob probably about two weeks just to record two and a half hours worth of video. So I noticed, however, after one day of being uploaded on YouTube that it had 46 views and 3 likes and 2 dislikes. But only 9 hours of the video were watched. So that tells me if only 9 hours were watched of a two and a half hour long video, then really only four people took the time to watch it all the way through, and that would leave 42 people that didn't watch it all the way through. So I'm thinking that video was way too much all at once for my intended audience. And I believe that it's just too much information for a person who might be newly disfellowship or disassociated to grasp all at once. And for the baby being weaned analogy that's used in Isaiah chapter 28, uh, a baby being weaned away from the milk. I think the video I made is like slapping down a Cajun spiced T-bone steak in front of a baby and expecting them to eat it. When really if you're going to wean a baby you just give them little bits of food at a time and that food has to be pureed. Like applesauce or pureed carrots and then you just put a little bit on a spoon and coax them into eating it and then if they're having difficulty and they spit up some food you just wipe their face and start again with just a smaller amount on the end of the spoon. So you really can't put a t-bone steak in front of a baby who's just now waking up and weaned from the milk and put a steak knife in their hand and expect them to eat it. So now I'm thinking of doing videos in the future that are much shorter in time and only taking on one tiny little piece of information, easily digestible information at a time. And that's pretty much in line with what it says in Isaiah chapter 28. I'll read it for you. It's, it's in uh, Isaiah chapter 28 and starts in verse 9. So listen carefully. Whom will one instruct in knowledge? And whom will one make understand what has been heard? Those who have been weaned from the milk, those moved away from the breast. For it is command upon command, command upon command, measuring line upon measuring line, measuring line upon measuring line. Here a little, there a little. For by those stammering with their lips, and by a different tongue, he will speak to this people. So, 
Do you understand that? Here in Isaiah chapter 28, it pretty much tells me what I'm doing wrong. I'm giving too much all at once and expecting people to be able to grasp it. So in the future I'll be doing short, shorter videos with much the same information in little pieces at a time. Little digestible, edible chunks at a time for my intended audience. And referring back to the video I did, uh, the last video I did, Jehovah's Witnesses, the overlapping generation. So I know there are people in my audience who completely understand everything I said in that video and are comfortable with me giving them that kind of information all at once. However, it's really the other, the, the ones that don't quite yet understand that I'd like to reach. And so please bear with me uh, if I repeat a lot of information that my subscribers are likely already familiar with. However, every now and again there might be something come up that maybe you haven't seen uh, scripture connected in such a way anymore like the one I just read. And uh, I hope you'll continue watching them. I intend to also make some new videos for disfellowship Jehovah's Witnesses only in that series. And because there are some other things that uh, that very esoteric group of people who continued watching down to at least the fourth video uh, should understand now. That's, that's pretty much a video series for people who have indeed graduated and are used to eating solid food. They could consume a T-bone steak with Cajun spices and uh, cayenne peppers on the side um, and eat it with a steak knife and a fork. So yeah, I'll, I'll need to make uh, probably a few more videos in that For Disfellowship Jehovah's Witnesses Only series. Um, but now I'm realizing that uh, even though it is a For Disfellowship Jehovah's Witnesses Only series, at least that's what the title says, I'm realizing that uh, even if you are a Jehovah's Witness in good standing, and that's in good standing with uh, some men living in Brooklyn or Walk Hill or wherever it, wherever it is they live now, uh, there's, there's a lot of profound information that you should understand too. That Jehovah's Witnesses who still go to Kingdom Halls and attend all the meetings should really understand. So if you're up for it, watch that series of videos for disfellowship Jehovah's Witnesses only. So this at least, uh, at least one other thing you may have noticed is that absolutely, I, I stumble a lot in my speech. Uh, I have a difficult time finding the words to communicate what I'm thinking or a concept that I have in my head and then relating it all back to Bible scriptures. And sometimes uh, I, I'll make several attempts at pronouncing even simple words and uh, until they come out right. And really, uh, I might be too embarrassed to make videos, being completely aware that I stumble a lot in my words. And one of the things that gives me a great deal of comfort is what it said here in Isaiah chapter 28. I'll read it again. It says, For by those stammering with their lips, and by a different tongue, he will speak to this people. And so that gives me an enormous amount of 
comfort and courage and confidence in continue, continuing to make videos even though I have a difficult time finding all the right words to express intensely profound spectacular Bible profundities that are inside my head and finding the words to speak those in a smooth easy way is obviously difficult for me so please bear with me in all the videos uh, there is another actually another concept from Isaiah chapter 28 that I completely skipped over even though it was a two and a half hour video in regards to the overlapping generation. So maybe I'll just include that in this video and then wrap up. The, uh, the uh, scripture is in verse 20. Verse 20. So after speaking about how the covenant with death will be dissolved and the vision with Sheol will not stand. Uh, the governing body, of course, made the overlapping generation doctrine. They invented a new doctrine to cover up the fact that that, that covenant with death that had been promised by the Washtower Society and its governing body to the entire Jehovah's Witness community around the world for around a hundred years had failed. And they invented uh, an overlapping generation doctrine to cover that all up. And I think the general consensus, especially amongst the ex-Jehovah's Witness community, is that it just doesn't fit. It, it's not a good enough excuse, considering the enormous promises made and all those millions of people that would never die who are now dead. And so, with that in mind, now I can read verse 20. This is, uh, in my opinion, a beautiful analogy for how people would feel after the covenant with death was proven to be a failure. So here we go. Verse 20. For the couch has proved too short for stretching oneself on, and the woven sheet itself is too narrow when wrapping oneself up. So doesn't that really describe the overlapping generation doctrine, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> Their invention just doesn't cover all the exceptional promises they've made, that everlasting life comes through one of their promises that they made in 1920 and, and in several other years, and in regards to the generation that was alive in 1914 who would live through the conclusion of the system of things into a paradise earth. So, I'm going to wrap up the video. Uh, I will be making shorter, but hopefully more frequent videos in the future, and a lot of the information will be repetitive. And yes, by the way, there will be dislikes on the video, and, and there will be scoffers, people who really won't believe that Jesus Christ came as a thief in the night and broke into their house and stole a person. To actually reach that point in understanding, it did take me around two and a half hours to, to get the entire concept, which definitely is strange and unusual. <laughs> It will be a very strange and unusual thing uh, once people appreciate what's really happening. It really is happening. What Jesus Christ said would happen 
is really happening and it's happening in a spectacular but very strange and unusual way inside the Jehovah's Witness community. It's happening to you right now. So that's the end of this video. Thank you.